Hey guys! This is Silver Strand State Beach in San Diego County. And this is my road trek RV that I'm restoring still. <laughs> and this is my new ukulele, which I've only been playing for two months. And I wanted to talk to you about how far I've gotten in two months as a complete beginner. The first instrument I've learned since elementary school. Well, I guess my last lesson was in high school for piano. I played piano for quite a while, but never guitar, never any stringed instrument. And this one is the first one I've been able to play. I tried playing guitar. It was just really, really hard on my hand. Maybe it's my age. Maybe it was my hand. I'm right-handed and I use this right hand for literally all my projects and this hand has become really really neglected so weak and uncoordinated so it's just I tried playing guitar and it was the hardest thing in the world I had to ice my hand and it was cramping and but this instrument has has been a lot easier for me so I thought I'd talk to you about it and see if I could convince anyone else to think about picking up ukulele ukulele is to me the best camping instrument, musical instrument. I've tried bringing a piano. It weighed 50 pounds. Sure, you could bring something along like this, Casio CTS 300. Um, it's not going to keep your fingers in shape, and sometimes your songs won't be playable because the range is so short. Then you pretty much need a table to put it on, too. So if you're going to play outside, you need to have a table. If you want to play inside, if you have someone you're camping with, they're right there with you, listening to everything you're doing. And this is just totally unacceptable. I might even be able to convince my husband of this, and he plays guitar. And he's been looking for a travel guitar, I can't tell you for how long. We've been doing our camping trips for three years now, and he's always kind of thinking about, wouldn't it be nice to have that travel guitar that was so much easier? He could take it on the airplane, uh, wouldn't take up so much room. The, the guitar is a hundred, maybe a hundred percent bigger than this ukulele, which is a tenor size. And this is the second to largest. It's amazing how much room even a guitar can take up. I mean, that is so light. This case was $28 on eBay, and it has a handle. The neck of the ukulele is much smaller than the neck of the guitar, and the ukulele only has four strings, whereas the guitar has six. So when you're playing, your four free fingers only have to manage four strings. On the ukulele, on the guitar, they have to get to a lot more positions and six strings. The circumference of the ukulele neck is around four inches. The circumference of this guitar's neck is around five and a half inches. Another reason ukulele even can enter the camping trip instrument category for competition is that it can play pretty much the same songs as guitar and still sound pretty decent. A guitar still sounds a lot better on certain songs that you've heard with picking, maybe some sadder songs. A little bit tougher to get that sad vibe out of a ukulele. <laughs> but the ukulele has the guitar beat on ease of play because I don't know, if, I don't think you can do this on the guitar. Straight out of the box, you can have so much fun messing around with ukulele just holding down one string. You can play a complete chord Actually, this is a chord. It's a technically... You can hold down this one and play an A minor. There's that one. But you can have fun just goofing around without knowing anything about this instrument. I mean, you just kind of... All you have to do is hold down. This is called barring. good enough yet. And ukulele can do funky even. I'll put a link to a woman who teaches a really great funky strum. I'm still working on this strum. Funky strum. <laughs> down, down, up, mute, up, down, down, up, mute, up. Eight counts. You can play melody. 
melancholy kind of romantic songs like Moon River. So many genres that you can actually play and it's surprising once you start looking into it. The reason I think this is also the greatest instrument, not just for camping but in general, and maybe some of you think it's kind of a fad, but this is a good fad. <laughs> there are some fads that actually help mankind. This is one that I think is just perfect for our time right now with, and maybe I'm going to date the video here by talking about the coronavirus pandemic, but so much bad news. Who else is tired of hearing about all this bad news? And it's just every day, constant, and it's been going on for months, not just the pandemic. This year has been so traumatic, and for me personally, one of the hardest things this year was hearing that one of our favorite camping sites burned in the Mojave Preserve. It's been piling on, piling on. And this is one way that you can feel, even for just a few minutes every day, that you have a little control over your life and a little kind of a retreat that you can go to to remember happy vibes and happy songs. Ukulele is just such a happy sound. It just conjures up the beach, the seagulls, and the pelicans, and the wind, and Hakuna Matata, no worries. <laughs> and the other thing that makes this so great for camping is I think singing is something all of you should either do more of or think about doing and you've never, if you've never really felt comfortable doing singing. I know there's some people who were told when they were younger you have a terrible voice or well we don't want you to be in our singing group or why can't you sing on pitch and I think it's kind of sad that that kids pick up those those messages and it shuts them down from doing music when maybe they would have worked harder on it or gotten better or just enjoyed it more or had fun just letting loose and if you go listen to Bob Dylan more go listen to him again He's not on pitch all the time. My voice isn't great, but I still think it's fun. It's just a good, it's almost like meditation because you're breathing deeply and you're also um, making a sound, a little bit like meditation. <laughs> like guitar, ukulele is perfect for singing and it's even more perfect for, I think, someone like me who's a little bit older and it's quieter than guitar. So I can still hear myself pretty well when I'm trying to reach those pitches that are a little hard for me. The guitar is very resonant, big box. It's beautiful. I love guitar and I might try it next after this. <laughs> and maybe there's some of you who don't, have never really gone camping in kind of a traditional sense where you sat around the campfire with traditional campfire songs. Um, but you should try it sometime. It's actually a lot of fun and this is a really great way to get into doing that and to play along with people who want to sing. You can play by yourself out in the woods. It's, it's so versatile. You can take it literally anywhere and sit with it and you're not going to bother anyone because it's not loud. Another great thing about learning ukulele is that you can pretty much teach yourself the basic level of understanding just watching YouTube videos and looking at online information. There are a lot of really pretty good teachers online. I think the hard thing you miss it's that I'm missing from it is things like little nuances that they just don't cover they just don't cover in all the videos. Like for me I think one of the things I'm having trouble with is just my strumming needs a lot of work. <laughs> It's just kind of harsh right now. Doing things like barring and there's a certain way that it feels and it still sounds good. And I'm not doing it that way all the time. Sometimes I'm kind of leaning on this part of my finger too much and I don't have this part down hard enough. I'll put a, a list of the ukulele videos that I found that help me out the most in a playlist on my channel in case you want to try some of them out. One of the really nice things though is that a lot of the chords, you can play a lot of songs just kind of in this area, right right here. I mean, sometimes you have to go down to the, the fourth fret down here. Find a decent chord chart. I'll put a link to this one 
in the description of the video. You can really pretty much teach yourself, but when it comes to actually the ergonomics and the hand positioning and the right way to strum, it might have been good to have a live instructor for some of those little things about like exactly how your wrist is moving and how your fingers are falling. It's a very physical activity. I think it is harder than piano on that front. Another thing I want to talk about is, is the breaking in period. If you don't take anything else away from my little video here, please think about not getting discouraged during the break in period. There's this really steep learning curve, or not learning, but I would say it's more of um, getting to the point where you can actually start enjoying playing. It's the first month for me. Now I wasn't only I wasn't playing that often in the first month. Some people might really want to go hard at it in the beginning, but it hurt so much for me to do this over and over again with enough force that I was getting a clean tone from from each string. And that's the cool thing. This instrument seems a lot more laissez-faire or loosey-goosey in terms of if if you can reach it better. If, if you can think of a better way to reach the chord with your hand and what you can do, then it's fine. Whereas in piano, they're a little more rigid about how you sit and exactly how you hold your hands and back. And I mean, for example, John Mayer, the famous guitarist, he holds down some of his chords with his thumb on this side of the neck. I'm not gonna be doing that, it's too hard. Teach yourself at your leisure, <clears throat> maybe doing 15 minutes a day and after the first month you'll get some calluses if you work at it here's the trick you need to work at it every day at least in the beginning five minutes until it's so it's hurting so much that you just can't keep going do it until you just can't keep going I mean not till you're bleeding or anything just <laughs> you, you'll know when it's hurting too much and maybe you're getting a cramp um, but do that every single day and guaranteed, if you keep at it, you will get some calluses and then it will be so much easier to play. So the one thing I want to mention about calluses is that at first I thought I was maybe losing the feeling in my fingertips because they feel different now. There's a loss of fine sensation on the very tip of my finger. Um, and it doesn't really bother me because I don't have any use for that most of the time. I'm not someone that needs to read Braille or anything like that. So, but it's, what I can compare it to is if you touch the ball of your foot and then touch the arch of your foot with your finger and you'll see how much more sensitive the, the arch is versus the ball of your foot. And that's what's happening with my fingertips, which is fine because I do want to be able to play this and practice uh, more more consistently. And ukulele is pretty inexpensive as far as real musical instruments go. So I just bought this one on the Sweetwater website looking at star ratings um, and I'm not sure it's the greatest one honestly. It's good enough. I think the most important thing really to start with is just to get anything that, that sounds halfway like you want to play it and um, my son picked up a really pretty good one at a pawn shop for a hundred dollars US. It had some dings in it and the face was starting to cave. He didn't notice these things by the way. The face was starting to cave in <laughs> right here from the tension but honestly it sounded better than this one. The strap was only seven dollars on Amazon. Hey guys, I was gonna, I was gonna do some 10 camping songs you can know with only three chords. But I don't have the right microphone for being here at the beach. It's a really nice day. The only thing is there is a little smoke from the fire over east of here. <laughs> Hopefully, if you're watching this years from now, we've all figured out how to keep this from happening. If you just want to goof around, you can have a lot of fun goofing around on this thing. Just playing this one, one finger here. another one. I like to make these up just in my spare time. <laughs> I need to work on my strumming big time. 
And one thing I really want to learn how to do is chucking. And it's this thing where you, <laughs> it, where you play a chord, but at the same time you mute. It's something like when you're doing in the, in the jungle song, you know, we move it, the we move it, the we move it, the we move it. You know that song. So you're supposed to chuck. You're supposed to go, we move it, chuck, a we move it, chuck, a. I have to just mute. But so you, you strum, but then your palm of your hand hits the string as you're coming down. Like that, kind of, but I can't do it consistently at all. This is my first time trying the singing in the park thing. I've never done this before. And there are a few airplanes going by once in a while. So just for fun, did you know that there are at least 10, maybe more, uh, traditional camping songs that you can sing just knowing three chords? C, F, and G, or the one, four, and five chords in any key. So we're gonna go through those, and luckily I'm not gonna sing the whole song on all of these. And there's the Balboa Park main attractions right over there. This is actually a back corner of Balboa Park where I'm sitting right here. Ready? to play this one. There's the simple way with the three chords and then there's some other chords that make it sound nicer. I'm gonna I'm gonna play the harder one. Ready? All night, all day, angels watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day, angels watching over me. In the jungle, the mighty jungle. here at this park right here. I don't know it yet, but it's such a good song. I'm gonna have to shift it out of C into the key of G because of my voice. Dig trailers for sailor rent. Room to let 50 cents. No phone nor old pets. I ain't got no cigarettes. My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. I come from heaven with a banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. Swing low, sweet cherry, oh, come and pour to carry me. plans for ukulele next? Well, of course, I'd like to get a lot better, a lot better, faster at switching chords, better at strumming, much better at chucking. <laughs> and I'd like to learn some much harder songs. Um, some of the ones I really would like to learn are really challenging for me, so I'm going to really have to practice 
hand positions here, maybe get a capo like I mentioned. I'm going to keep practicing every day. Who knows, maybe start another YouTube channel. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you'll consider this really fun instrument.